Okay, this is my first attempt at a video of any kind of craft, actually. So hopefully it goes well. Uh, I have already started on this design. I was doing it for my daughter's sorority. Um, and so I've already started. Thank you to Carrie for the Kitty Kelly book. It actually worked out really well uh, because it's got a nice white cover um, that I can that I can just cover or leave. I'll probably do something with the the end so that it doesn't show. Um, so this pattern I actually make in Photoshop, um, and that's actually a whole separate tutorial. Um, but I bring in a graphic and then create lines one pixel apart and uh, and create an effect so that there are lines throughout the entire um, graphic. And I'll explain that. If you're not um, handy with Photoshop, you can actually purchase uh, patterns, uh, book art patterns online, and they actually come with um, measurements in millimeters that you use with just a ruler and measure out your marks on the book instead. I've done several this way, but for my own personal patterns, I prefer this method. So this one, I then go through and count the lines. This one has 126 lines to it. Um, I like to do two sheets per line, so that's will require 252 sheets of paper. Um, so you're going to need a book that's at least 504 pages because each page, uh, ha, you know, each page 383 and 384 is one sheet of paper. So you have to divide the total number of sheets by two because you're not looking at pages, you're looking at sheets of paper. So I needed a book at least 504 pages. This book was actually had 20 extra pages, so I put 10 pages on one side and 10 pages on the other, um, and that's where I start the design. It's, you know, I find the middle point in the book. Um, so, I've done, as I said, I've done several, um, but I'm gonna show you how I measure and fold and cut, um, and I've, actually done a couple pages of measuring. So I'll start. Um, what I like to do is I like to mark on my design every fifth line so that I can keep track of where I am. So when I stop, I was at line number 95. There are 126 lines. So um, when I do the design, I line it up in the middle and then I fold the extra part of the page so that it's a, used as a guide. And this one was too long, so I folded it a little bit so that I could fit it nicely on the page. So if I've done 95, which is again, each page I do two sheets, I'm gonna start with 94. So I use this as a guide and I go down to line 94, which is right here. Um, oh, and so the things you will need, I just like to have something some cardstock that's stiff so that I can rest it on there. Um, I, I use a ruler to measure things. Um, the pencil that I use is a mechanical pencil because it tends to give sharper lines. And then I use a piece of, I mean, a pair of scissors and I mark the pair of scissors for how deep I want to cut into the paper. Um, so some of the Markings will just be folds and some of them will be cut, what they call cut and fold. Um, if you have a design that's just an, a one big design, like just a heart, you'll never have to cut. But if you have a design that has these interior designs, those will be cut. The outside design will just be fold. And I'll explain that a little bit more. So for number 94, if you can see, I mark the outsides of the lines. So I'll just mark 
every time a line starts or stops. And I do that for two sheets. And just so that I don't have to reposition so often, and you can reposition every single time, but I try to just sort of move this carefully while still keeping in line with the side. And it's really important that you keep it lined up because otherwise your design will be off. So I will mark 93, this is line 93, and I'll just mark all of the start and stop. So this one is the inside of the, the A right here. So I'll mark there. And one more, please excuse my hands and nails. Since I do crafts, I do not have attractive nails um, and I do actually bring hand cream and keep it with me at all times because my hands get really dry from working with the paper okay so I just do that most of the time I will mark probably 20 pages at a time um, and so as I'm going I've marked in the book every fifth, so I had marked 95 and now this is 90 so that I can make sure that I'm staying um, consistent with my marking so that I, I'm not off at all. Um, so I'll show you then how I fold and cut. So I'll go back to one of the pages I've already marked. Um, since it's the same markings on two sheets of paper, and I'll treat them kind of as one unit. So on this page, the outside lines just get folded. And so you fold, you, you move it to where the line is. And I use the text as a guide to keep it straight. And then just run my finger. Some people actually take a straight edge or a bone folder and really make that crease and really crisp, but I find that my, I've done it enough that my fingers work pretty well. And so the same thing with this page, which is also 95. And fold that. So those are for the two outside markings. For all the other markings that are on these pages, I use my scissors and I've marked the scissors, I'm not sure how far in, but I've marked them probably maybe half an inch, not even, probably quarter, quarter, no, I guess it is closer to half an inch in. And so what I do, and again, you can do this individually or you can do them together. Since the markings are exactly the same, I actually take my scissors and do it backwards. It might be awkward, um, I'm just used to it. And so I line up the scissors, trying to be as straight as I can and trying to be right at that line that I've marked on my scissors with Sharpie marker um, so that the lines are consistent. So I just cut along each of those lines. Um, again, if this is awkward as a position, which it is awkward, um, it just saves me time. Um, you can turn it around and cut them individually or you can cut them facing towards you so that it's more convenient. So now I have all my cuts. So. All I do is fold down every other one. So starting on one side or the other, it doesn't matter. I fold one down, keep one up, fold one down, keep
keep one up, fold one down, keep one up, fold one down. And I try to, this book for some reason doesn't like to fold down, but I'll do the best I can. And same thing with this page, starting at the end, fold down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And um, another thing I like to do is have a large rubber band. And then I just tuck those under the rubber band when they're done and press down to keep them that way. And I'll show you one more. So these would be pages 94. I don't mark 94, I only mark every fifth page um, just to keep track of where I am. But so with 94, I fold down the ends on the last two markings. And again, if there are just two markings on a page, all you do is fold. So you wouldn't need to, to cut at all if there's just two markings on a page. But when there's more, we fold down the two ends. And in the book art world, um, this is called a combi fold a combination because some of it's folded, some of it's cut and fold. Sometimes it's called a cut and fold. So again, I'm going to cut along these marks that I made that correspond with the lines on my sheet. And there are free patterns that are available online um, on several different sites. There's a Facebook or several Facebook pages that deal in book art. And you can get some patterns there. And um, so again, now I'm folding every other one. I'm trying to really press those down. Again, you can get a bone folder or you can really run your fingernail across them to keep those down. Um, if you can make sure that the folds are straight it's better i'm not doing a fabulous job of making sure that those cuts i mean are the folds are as straight as they probably should be but um i'm just sort of trying to not have this video be super long and i press down a little bit and then tuck it in and just keep going throughout the pattern and as you can see, it just sort of creates, and this will be, if you're looking at the pattern that my daughter's in a sorority, Gamma Phi Beta, this is the crescent moon and the A's. And you can see the A there and another A and an M starting up here so that as the book goes, it will, create the entire word or set of words um, for the design. And um, when I'm done, I will post what the end result looks like. Um, you can also color these um, with, uh, if you can color the designs with Sharpie marker. Um, what I found is that coloring both sides of the edge tends to create a better uh, coverage for the color, uh, or you can use a little bit of glue and some mica powders to have sort of an iridescent color on the end, or you can just leave it uh, as it is. So I hope that was helpful. Um, again, these are created, I use these in Photoshop, um, and these ones are you would just take these measurements. This one's 14.1 and 15.2. So in that case, you would go down, actually using the centimeters, and go down to 14.1 and 15.2 and make your marks there and using this type of a pattern that you, this is an ampersand. And I've figured out how many pages I'm going to need. Um, and it gives all the different pages and the markings that are required on those pages. So 
So hopefully that's helpful. And that's how I do my book art. Thanks for watching.